Hey guys, PK here. Hope you're doing really, really well. <clears throat> Today I'm going to talk about um, why data is actually useless when it comes to picking <clears throat> a high growth, high cash flow um, property and, and, uh, and suburb. Now I know that I'm on record for saying that data is king and um, it is, but it's, it's actually useless as well. So let me um, explain to you the reason why. And, and if you're looking for a high growth suburb, something that will <clears throat> cost you between 300 and, you know, 300,000 and $600,000 that you can buy in the next few months and that will rise by, you know, um, four to seven to 10% um, year on year on average over the next three to five years, then this video will be really, really useful to you. So stick around and, um, if it is useful, please give me a like or a love so I can get some um, reciprocation and love back, some energy back. <clears throat> so data is actually useless. I know that would have perked up your ears. It was a bit of a clickbait type message. Um, but that is actually the case because you can take different data points and craft a story at will. Okay, so let's do that right now. Let's rewind back to 2017. And let's use data to explain why Brisbane is great. <clears throat> so 2017, Brisbane is by far one of the most affordable cities in the entire country. There is interstate migration picking up and that is increasing at a faster and faster and faster rate. <clears throat> the price point that you can get in Brisbane is very affordable compared to uh, Melbourne and Sydney. Furthermore, large parts of Brisbane give positive cash flow property from the get-go. Okay, so I've already talked about four, four data points, plus vacancy rate is really, really low, plus online search interest <clears throat> for places, um, you know, in Moreton Bay Council and other places are really, really high. You know, we're talking more than 550 clicks on realestate.com or domain for every property for sale okay population is increasing into um, i mentioned inter interstate migration but also international migration is coming into brisbane it looks like all of the um all of the data factors are, are lining up quite nicely and that's what a lot of people will tell you, did tell you in 2017. In fact, that's Brisbane's story started in 2014. It continued to 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, even right now. There are so many people saying Brisbane, particular areas in Brisbane are the most um, favorable for short and long-term price growth. Based on all those data points that I just shared with you, growth corridors, you know, how much the government is spending, how, <clears throat> in the future, um, Brisbane and the Gold Coast won't really see a divide. They'll merge and they'll melt into one larger city. Or if you want to talk about Bellbird Park or Ripley out in the Western Corridor, how that's akin to the Western Corridor in Sydney and, and towards Parramatta and, and the huge growth that Sydney saw in Balkham Hills and, and the Western suburbs, right? So there's so many ways that... <clears throat> There are literally hundreds of ways that I could jot down and create a fantastic brochure or, or something like that and convince you, <coughs> excuse me, that Brisbane is or was the best place to buy in 2017 and really right now as well is the best place to buy in 2020. But the reality is ever since these data factors started looking good, started trending well, all the rest of it, Brisbane in general, and especially the pockets that many of these mainstream commentators talk about has been very, very flat. Okay. Yes, it's been positive cash flow, but that positive cash flow of two or three thousand dollars per annum before tax is just going to stay at, at two or three thousand dollars per annum before tax, even in 10 years time, if the growth doesn't occur. Okay. So these data points, affordability, um, mortgage, lack of mortgage stress, um, high yields, population, interstate migration, vacancy, low price points, all the rest of it, online search interest, 
all the rest of it is completely useless unless you know how to use it okay so i mean i can go around the country and and say why and prove why it's good to invest in adelaide and with similar data prove why it's not good to invest in adelaide i can go to hobart and say you know has had a ama amazing growth get in now it's still got growth left <clears throat> or i can prove to you using dozens of data sources why hobart is not the place to buy and same with melbourne <clears throat> many people have experienced great growth in um places like frankston places like caram downs places like werribee down in geelong lana lara other places like that i can prove to you why using data why it's a great idea to invest in all those places right now i can also tell you using the same data interpreted a different way why you should not be touching those places with a 10-foot pole same with bendigo and ballarat people have made hundreds of thousands of dollars in the last four or five years in bendigo ballarat and i can prove to you using days on market online search interest stock on market building approvals vacancy rates yields um what else is there developable land supply listings volumes job advertisements you know data 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 why it's a great time to continue to buy in bendigo and ballarat but i can also prove to you using those same data points why actually you know it's probably had its day in the sun a lot of growth probably not much to come those those factors are, are, are starting to, to flatten out <clears throat> my point here is that data is useless okay you take five different experts including me five different gurus including me and using the same basis of fact because data is factual using the same basis of fact each of those five people will have different opinions about the market because when it comes to data let's say there's 30 data points there's in fact much more than that but let's say there's 30. you need to know how to weight each of the data points not all of them are important in equal weighting you need to know how to interpret the trends for a particular factor is it a five-year trend that we're looking at is it a 10-year is it an 18 month you need to know what ratios to look at in those data points across those data factors you need to understand <clears throat> whether one cancels another out right so does a really 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 high um renter proportion you know the number of people renting in that suburb let's say that's 60 percent is that cancelled out by a really low vacancy rate or is it not okay so on the surface of it you might say in a particular suburb there's 80 percent of all houses being investment property i'm not going to touch that it's way too much competition there's no way i can get a tenant or get a rental increase but if vacancy rate is very very low and trending in the right way then actually that cancels that factor out in many instances okay um what else we need to understand whether a factor is good bad or indifferent a vacancy rate guys of one percent is not necessarily good a yield of six percent is not necessarily good if you don't know what the outgoings are um, what else is a common thing just because it's had growth in the last three years of let's say hundred thousand dollars that doesn't mean it's going to have growth in the next three years of a hundred thousand dollars on the flip side sometimes people say look this suburb is still at the same price level as it was 10 years ago great buying opportunity what will make it automatically improve in value if it hasn't in the last 10 years also even if it hasn't improved in value in the last 10 years this could be a great time to buy it depends on the interpretation of the data and what i'm trying to slam home here is that the data is useless we need to take data convert it into information we need to take that information those trends the relative weightings whether a factor is is strong weak or indifferent their relative um, importance levels we need to take that data convert it into information and then convert that information to, into knowledge and when you can convert that information into knowledge when you can stitch it together when you can synthesize the data then you can convert it into capital growth and positive cash flow which means that in 10 to 15 years time 
if you play your cards right, if you rely not on data, but on information, knowledge, and execution, you can actually achieve a passive income that will give you flexibility in your life, that will allow you to reduce your work hours, alleviate your financial stress, give you options, pay down your mortgages, go on holidays. These things are all possible, but they're not possible by just following data willy-nilly. You need to convert that data into knowledge, convert that knowledge into capital gains and execution, into positive cash flow, right? So here's the, here's the second thing. So that was the first thing. Here's the second thing. To convert data into information and subsequently knowledge is not difficult, all right? There are many people that will tell you that the average person can't do it. All right, and that is absolutely wrong as well. Um, I'm here to say that yes, it can come across as overwhelming. Yes, it can be a little bit daunting when you see a lot of data factors in front of you. Yes, it can be a little bit intimidating <clears throat> when there's an overload of information online. But if you find the right data, if you know how to interpret it, that can be taught, that can be learned and the execution of finding the right suburb will take less than four hours okay and i'm not saying you know four hours kind of half doing netflix half social media and half research i'm saying four hours of concentrated research with the right data in front of you with the right knowledge the right trend analysis the right weightings the right importance levels when that education is in front of you less than four hours of research research true research true analysis and you don't have to be a data scientist to do this right a carpenter a tradie just average person average joe block can do this less than four hours of work you can guarantee yourself huge capital growth you can guarantee yourself that you'll buy a positive cash flow property and you can guarantee for yourself that you will increase your passive income year after year after year through property investment. So think about it. <clears throat> A, don't follow data for the sake of following data because it's useless if you don't know how to interpret it. B, don't be overwhelmed by data. It's very manageable, very understandable for the average person, once you're educated, to take that knowledge and execute, to actually do the analysis. All you need to know is addition, subtraction, and division okay you don't need to be a spreadsheet junkie you don't need to have fancy excel skills i've made it very very easy and it's not that i've made it very very easy it is very very easy if you know how to do it okay so hopefully that was useful i just want to i know that so many people are so overwhelmed by the overwhelm of information out there online i just want you to take a step back by going to more and more websites that's just going to perpetuate the problem of overwhelm, information overload. You need to take a step back, educate yourself scientifically, and then in less than four hours, you can find your suburb. And the proof of this is in places, um, in places like, let's say, like, uh, what I'm gonna say here. In a place like West Adelaide, Right, no one would have thought to invest in West Adelaide two years ago, at least not, not many people, it wasn't on the media headlines. But by applying data, you know, there are so many people, you know, my clients included, that have been able to pinpoint one or two suburbs in West Adelaide, not all of West Adelaide, by the way, a couple of um, pockets within a council that have risen subsequently by seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 in the last two years, right? now. There's no huge population growth story. There's no huge infrastructure story. There's no huge interstate migration story, but the right data interpreted the right way plus execution equals results. You want results. The way to get them is not going around in circles by yourself trying to understand data. And the second way is not to outsource the responsibility if you don't have to. Okay, if you have zero time, if you don't have four hours, outsource it plenty of good buyers agents out there but if you have time you can do it yourself all right guys so hopefully that was useful my name's pk give me a like or love like i said at the start just give, give me some love back 
some reciprocation if you didn't actually enjoy did actually enjoy this video if it was useful um, property investing is manageable okay if you have any questions or, or comments um, chuck it chuck them down in the in the comment section below or I'm gonna put a link there as well um, but feel free to DM me okay I'm not not like a salesy type person I'm happy to answer your questions I'm happy to help you out DM me and see if um, see if I can help you see if we're a good fit um, other than that there's also other people that you can DM there's plenty of good pre people around in property not everyone is bad okay um, best of luck guys passive income through property as possible don't forget that Catch you later, bye.